Hey, what's up? We're here in Austin, Texas. It's South by Southwest. Although right now we're a little bit removed from the main part of the festival. We're here at the Opera House, kind of a performance art space, vintage clothing store. Kind of an off the beaten path spot, but definitely the right spot to talk to one of the most exciting bands to emerge in the past year from Los Angeles, California, talking about No Age. They're punk, they're pop, they're noise, they're definitely DIY through and through. And more than any band, they've helped put the LA Performance Club, the smell, on the national map. Best of all, they're vegan, so I'm definitely psyched to talk to Dean Spunt and Randy Randall, the guys of No Age. Guys, it's so good to finally meet you and talk to you. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks. Thanks I'm so really much, excited. John. Yeah, we're really excited to meet you. You know, the Sasha piece in The New Yorker, where I think the subhead was a uh, thriving punk scene in L.A. I, and and I, I wonder, like, how do you guys feel about whether this is noise described as a noise band or a noise pop band? Or uh, is there anyone that's more accurate than another? Or does it really matter? Maybe it depends on who you're talking to. Yeah. You know, yeah. because if you call this a punk band, to somebody, they might be like, oh, I'm not going to like that, you know? We did an interview for uh, Death and Taxes, and the, dude, the guy who was doing the interview was like, you know, when I first heard of you guys, there's a little bit of hype, and you guys were a self-proclaimed punk band. He's like, and I was like, that's, no, nah, come on, yeah. punk yeah. band, I'm thinking like Punk's over. Mohawks, and like, he said, this is stupid. Uh -huh. So then I heard you and was like, you guys are a punk band. Yeah, yeah no, you guys are yeah. a punk band, you know? Boop. So yeah. we take that D Boon kind of Minuteman instead of where sure. punk is what you make it. Yeah. You know, you should be able to do. I think the, the most exciting thing about punk for us when we discovered it, you know, when was we the were weirdness. Younger. Yeah, is the fact that you could really do whatever you wanted to do. Not the cookie cutterness of it, just right. being like, yeah. you, you can you can be a total goofball. And uh -huh. I think that's what a place like The Smell really embodies is that's the truest sense of being a punk. And mm -hmm. punk isn't about, you know, just youth culture and mohawks. It's about believing in yourself and, and expressing your opinions in any unique personal form you want to do it. So I think to us, I mean, if you ask me, I'd, I'd say we're a punk band. If you ask my mom, a rock and roll, you know? Right, right. So I think maybe it's like looking at an art piece or something. It's like whatever it whatever means to the person. Whatever you bring to it. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, if there weren't pop melodies and, and, and you know, pretty strong songwriting, but yeah. if at the root of it, I don't think it would reach sort of as wide yeah. a, a, a yeah. thing as you're talking Part, about. Yeah, I think we, we when we were starting the band, we discussed music, and I think one of the things we agreed on was that we like catchy songs. Uh -huh. We like things that are pop music. You yeah. Know? Like a band and like, like Who's Do. Oh, know? yeah. Jeez. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know? They're amazing. Or Squeeze or yeah. something. Like, sure. just pop hooks. So many people cite Squeeze, too. Yeah, now. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, crazy. I mean, I remember when we, we started listening to the, that singles compilation, the 45s and under, mm -hmm. and uh, we felt like cheese balls. It was like, yeah. guys, listen <laughs> to this. And we're like, what? We're like, no, oh, it's awesome, you know? But so, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah totally good pop. songwriting and and just just agreeing to go just go. You know what? I actually like pop music. I yeah. feel there are pop popier moments in yeah. this record. You know, I I hope so. I mean, I feel like you know you you can't really make the same record twice. And for just us as uh, as artists and songwriters, you know, we want to continue to evolve and do whatever we're doing better than we did it last time. And I think you, every time you write a song, you learn something new about about yourself and the songwriting process. So as soon as we finished recording Nouns, the next day we we went back to our kind of home studio and kept kept writing. So it was like, mm -hmm. we just learned all this st <laughs> stuff about through making this record, let's make the next one. Right. So I think yeah. it's really just, uh, it's an exciting process to uh, to uh, to explore. And, uh, and there's a great quote that, uh, that Eddie Murphy quotes Richard Pryor. When he's asking him, like, what do I do now? He's, you know, he's asking for advice from the, from the elders. Like, it's like, well, you know, you don't, you don't lighten up, you tighten up. You don't uh -huh. get lighter with your with your music or your art. You tighten it. You find what you did before and how to make it better. Right. Did the way you went about recording this this record, this second album, vary a lot from? Because effectively, I mean, um, Weirdo Rippers was a compilation of songs from yeah. EPs, yeah. Right. right? Yeah, I think because we knew we were going to write a, a record, but we still recorded it in three different places. So we kind of like that feel of, you know, Weirdo Rippers. It's like, well, that sounds totally different. The recording quality. It's just kind of. Mm -hmm. flows like yeah. that so I think we kind of wanted something similar where you can you know it almost sounds like a, you know like a mixtape or something yeah you know? I think some of some of our favorite records are like retrospectives or collections like louder than bombs or 45 and under you know you just you see these like bands from different periods in different studios kind of collecting their best material and I kind of we would hope that every record we make is sort of has that feeling of you know like this is this is the best they have there well the song the song yeah. tells you what kind of recording it needs some yeah. songs need to sound huge. Yeah. Some songs need to sound like they're recorded on a tape player. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. 
Was this? Did it take longer to make this record? Or is, I don't, you know, not, not really. I don't think know? so. Yeah, I mean, because ever since before Weird Rippers came out, that was all the first stuff we wrote. So we've been writing stuff since then. But I think we were only in a real studio yeah. for like a couple days. So since last year's South by Southwest, it's just been like one sort of a kind of amazing thing after another. There were the EPs. There was a summer. I think the summertime was when people really sort of, I think, nationally started to get get wind of the smell mm. or you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know the smell become aware of it nationally and yeah. then of course there was there was the rec there was the album and this this new yorker piece that just really just took on a life and became so aware among so many people uh did, was that would you say was the fall the time when things really kind of moved up awareness of no age i think for people That's that were outside of our circle yeah yeah definitely i mean we were getting emails from people who were you know women who were like 60 you know, mm -hmm. being like, wow, I just read your piece in the New Yorker and I heard your music and I, I you're my favorite. I, I don't like, you know, I don't even know what punk rock is, but wow. You right. Know? I think pl growing up in, in L.A. and deciding to play, you know, the, the kind of music we do kind of noise music and finding that um, people outside of, you know, first your bedroom, you know, <laughs> your parents were nice enough to listen to your four tracks and now your friends want to hear it. And then you find a community like The Smell who are willing to, you know, kids are willing to come down on a sweltering, you know, hot, hot summer day and yeah. listen to it. And then or, it's just, it grows and you're just kind of, I'm continually scratching my head going, you know, maybe the, maybe the, the world is, isn't that big. Or the idea that we're making music and people are listening or people are um, opening their ears to it, which uh -huh. to me, I, music we always made, I just thought was just for me and Randy. Like, I didn't think anyone would really like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting. And uh, there's definitely like, you know, in L.A. and actually all over when we tour, it's, it's a really like the word, the term no age as a band, it really like, yeah, there's kids and there's older people and they all come and they're like, wow, you know. I, I think part of that is because there's just this real, I don't know, happy is such a maybe reductive word, but but positive thing around what you guys do. I mean, at least that's what I get from it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think one thing so. that's important for us just, uh, you know, one of the concepts of, like when we first started the band is that, you know what, like negative things are going to happen. And it's sometimes through the most negative things in your life that you can learn, you know, a really important lesson on how to move forward in your life. So instead of denying those things, I think sometimes, you know, the word positive or it's happy. Right. It's sort of like, well, they're just, you know, it's all sun sunshine and puppy dogs. It's like, no, right. I think we're, you know, You've gone. You go through enough traumatic experiences in your life to realize, you know, it's just part of life. Yeah. So you ex you roll Those with things the punches end up and being you, positive. And you can celebrate them in, in the same way that you would celebrate, you know, something, po some, something positive. Mm -hmm.